I was asked recently by a student if I thought that a PhD was required to get into neurotechnology and to actually do something interesting. Everyone on the panel has a PhD. As an academic, that's how I make my bread and butter is training PhDs. But I was actually quite caught by the question because what we see today in neurotech, I don't think you need a PhD. Would you be able to convince me otherwise? So I hope I'm not wasting my time doing my PhD. Do we need a PhD? <laughs> Self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, oof, that's a good question. I challenged uh, Yannick uh, on that question regularly. Uh, do, uh, does somebody really need, I think in neuroscience, you probably, it's an advantage to have a PhD. Uh, you can, if you, if you just work on technical solutions, uh, even in the neuroscience context, so, you know, just you know, protocols, AI, you know, AI uh, uh, routines or, or simulations or, or implementations, you can, you can do that work. But if you really want to have an impact, I think if you want to go into sort of like tech transfer kind of space and uh, you want to understand what you're dealing with and at the same time sort of have some technical knowledge, I think that the PhD is, 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 is an added value. So uh, trust me, I didn't convince him. He convinced me that the PhD was an added value because I challenged him uh, quite a number of times. I said, you know, look at everything he's doing. He's already active. He's already doing stuff. So I'm saying, if this is what you do in your spare time, when are you going to do your PhD? And then, you know, and every time we meet every week, right? Every Monday, I look at him. I said, so when are you starting your experiment? <laughs> so because it's, a, it's an added burden. So somebody has to be really convinced that they want to do that. Uh, it's funny because in the lab we have two types. We have the ones who want to be academics and work academics and want to be professors and researchers and that's all they want to do for the rest of their lives. And then I have another group like Yannick and others who uh, sort of say, well, I want to get some knowledge here. I want to have an added value, an added advantage to give me some kind of incentive, you know, that I have something to offer here, that I'm not just coming up and being another entrepreneur, but I have some value and I know what I'm talking about if I'm addressing some problems. I think that's a, definitely an added value. So I think it's worthwhile. And I think a lot more and more maybe in this space, in this particular space, we're talking about a very specific space, merging technology with neuroscience. So I think in this space, maybe more than other spaces. But I don't know. <laughs> uh, you may not want me to have the microphone for this one. <laughs> um, well, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm from the other side. I'm the employer side of things. Um, and I think that it's a PhD for the sake of a PhD. I don't think that's necessarily the right reason to do a PhD. Um, so just as an example, we were part of a, a program, uh, one of the universities where they had a, a program to help um, give graduate students experience in industry. And the idea was to help prepare them better for industry. And, and the thinking was it was some granting money so they would have some partial scholarship support and they would do uh, internships in companies like ours. And um, we also do internships with undergraduate engineers. And maybe we're unique because we're a you know, hardware company. So you know, we rely more on electrical engineering and mechanical engineering and, and maybe a little less on algorithms and, 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 and math. But we always get a lot more out of the undergraduates than we get out of the out of the PhD students that we got. It's not a nice thing to say, but really, the the if you're going to do a PhD, it has to be because the topic that you want to do your PhD on is important to you, and that you want to explore that topic more. If you want to get a PhD because you think it'll make you more valuable in business, that, or, or an industry that's tricky, so. We found that a lot of these, these interns weren't necessarily that productive. That We gave them a problem to solve. And if they couldn't plug this algorithm that was their thing that they were studying to solve the problem, the minute it wasn't that, they would clock out. They would just either show up or even stop showing up because they, they're, they've really specialized in this one thing. And if, you know, I'm a hammer guy. And if I give you a piece of wood to cut in half, you start hitting with a hammer and when you realize it doesn't work, you've lost your interest. Whereas people who are a little earlier in the game, they haven't gotten to that point yet and they've got a hammer and they've got a saw and they've got a drill and, and they've just wanted to do something interesting. So, we, you know, there's, there's areas where obviously a PhD is helpful. There's certain areas where in a larger company where you have some algorithmic work that you need to solve, you want to hire an expert in that field and then you go for a PhD. But 
my experience is that people at that level then are not very flexible. And if you're a small company and you have 15 different things that you want done, you want someone who's a bit more flexible, who's willing to switch over and use the basic knowledge that they're, that they're learning on different things, as opposed to, I, I do regularization, and I'll regularize images, or I'll regularize EEG data, but that's all I know how to do is regularize. And, and they become less valuable from an employee standpoint. Um, so if the topic is interesting and you want to follow it and you want to get to that cutting edge, by all means, but if you're thinking it's going to be some sort of, uh, it'll give me more job opportunities, I, I would give that a bit more thought. Sorry. <laughs> that's, that's great because, uh, you know, now I can say that I disagree. Uh, being like, uh, I got my, my PhD like, well, yeah, seven years ago, but it's like still feel fresh, right? Um, well, uh, yeah, I, I, I managed I manage to, to get very different uh, things. My experience is, is varied, so, so is yours. Um, I don't think, well, I don't think that the PhD is necessary. I think it's just a very nice toolbox. And I would go at the opposite of what you just said. Um, but, I, but I do understand. I'm going to come back later on the understanding. Um, for me, what, what the PhD offered me was ton of different tools to tackle, uh, you know, the same problem or different problems. So if I, if I didn't do my PhD, I wouldn't know about uh, electrophysiology, in, for instance, uh, but not electrophysiology like you read in a book, but how to build an electrode, how to make an analog system work, down to how to modelize how neurons encode forces in the end. But I do understand what you mean, because there, there's an easy path, like the fast going path through a PhD, which is do the specific thing you're kind of hired for, get through it, publish, and get out. And at that point, what happens is you get good at building electrodes, or you get good at uh, doing this little model of that kind of thing. The problem with this is after that, if you try to hit the market, if this is not exactly what is required, you're gonna struggle. But if you open your mind in a lab, and specifically in academic labs, you have the opportunity to do tons of different things and learn tons of different uh, capabilities, talents, that will make you highly valuable to you know, a lot of different companies, not only one company that is looking for this uh, PCR thing that they're doing. So I think in, in this uh, approach, I think a PhD is very good, very, very valuable, but it needs to be um, fairly broad and not too uh, narrowed. So with that in mind, Fred, I'll let you close the panel and then I'll encourage everyone to go for a drink food and we can ask anyone about anything anyways. I, I think you know who's who. So Fred, uh, I'll let you close. I'll, this. I'll start to... No, no pressure. I start with a disclaimer. I actually dropped out from the PhD. I'm not a, I'm not a PhD. <laughs> As it is, I'm a PhD candidate and uh, my PhD has been interrupted. Now, I spent five years in a PhD program. Uh, the biggest mistake is I skipped the master. This was a mistake. I should have gone for a master because uh, then I could have more options after. But I wouldn't trade these five years in the PhD for anything. Okay? I'm not, I don't think that PhD is the only way to get there. But if I think of school in general, that is an undergrad, PhD, what I found for myself that school was great is that it is a period in life in which you can dedicate yourself entirely to learning. Once you quit school, now I have a business. I, I struggle to find the time to read, struggle to find the time to keep informed and everything. I'm always into execution, always exploitation. Um, but when you're in school, you manage, let's be fair, undergrad is not so hard. You can find the time to do undergrad and do many projects in parallel and just develop yourself. And this is what a PhD did for me. I, um, I know that if I count into PhD, just being able to do um, a literature review. Okay, this is how I base almost all my technology. I look at what's out there, and it really gets you into like the top notch of what's the scientific, uh, the human knowledge, basically, what it is to. The scientific literature is probably one of the biggest skills that I learned through the, the grad studies. Uh, then I would say that the PhD, uh, I was much more all over the place when I started the PhD, it made me much more directed and more rigorous in terms of what, of what I'm doing. And, uh, and like I said, I did many things in parallel, but it is through the PhD that I really became good at statistical analysis.
analysis, which I think is, anybody who does machine learning is great, but basically what's behind machine learning is all statistics. Uh, without a PhD, I wouldn't have had the time to do that because I would have been busy working, you no know, get, get, getting, so it's not required, Okay, because I think uh, it does affect a little bit what people think of you. you know, when you say you're not a PhD and you're doing neural tech, people will say, oh, you're not a PhD. Actually, no, nobody never said it. It's just in my mind, I think. But I think at one point, just your actions speaks for themselves. I think this is, uh, you need to, miss, you're a person before being a PhD. Um, but, and I would say PhD was just like a, a super great experience. Like I said, I work with monkeys. I mean, this is like, for at least three years of my life, my best friend was a monkey. This is something that is just like, <laughs> it's just like, uh, I wouldn't have lived that without, and it gives you a, but in terms of neuroscience, you are right that we are in a day and age where with OpenBCI, uh, you can set up a, a, a potent EEG lab in your home. Okay, and basically my, my PhD wasn't in EEG. All my EEG happened after the PhD. Um, so there's really a democratization of knowledge. Same thing with open access papers. So there's really a democratization, but still, I mean, it's, it would be hard to uh, focus so much on developing your knowledge if you have to have a day job and have to do things. So school really brings this thing that is, you have a period of life where you can develop your knowledge and school overall, so this is why I made it last as long as I thought. I, I, I did, and at one point, it's just that the entrepreneur on top of me kind of went forward. I would say, is a PhD sufficient to go in the business world? I would say totally not. Uh, you, there's really extra knowledge that is required. This is what I spent the last two years that, where I could, whereas I could have finished a PhD, I decided to start a business, to learn the business world, to have like the full package uh, at the end of it. And this was, for myself, was a good move, but uh, PhD is really like a great experience, a lot to learn. Uh, so it's personal choice at that point. But I know great entrepreneurs that didn't do a PhD. I mean, you're a super smart guy, not a PhD, but I mean, yeah, <laughs> super smart guy. And uh, so uh, it's not required, but um, it, it's, a, it, it's one thing. Yeah.